All right, good afternoon. My name is Jacob Bell. I'm a reliability specialist with Tico PSG. I'm uh, ISO ANSI certified category one vibration analysis. Um, I've worked with Tico PSG for a little over a year and a half now, and it's great in case Justin's watching. <laughs> you can go ahead and next one. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna go over a few uh, maintenance philosophies. Um, some of you might've heard these before. You might have some familiarity with them. The three we're gonna go over today is breakdown maintenance, preventative maintenance, and predictive maintenance, and how these can be implemented into your facility or your processes. You can go ahead. All right, so the first one is breakdown maintenance, or run to failure. Um, just like the name states, you're running, you're running your equipment until it fails. Um, you, know, you might do some PMs every now and then, but you're not taking any vibration analysis or you're not doing any type of predictive maintenance. Um, this has a lot of disadvantages because you have to stock all your parts or spare machines that you need to swap out whenever these fail. It has a high, high level of unscheduled downtime because you have no idea when these machines are going to just go out. They just go and you have to deal with it right then. Um, it's difficult to plan for the maintenance because again, you have no idea when this is going to happen. Um, so you don't know how many people you're going to need to fix it or when you're going to need to fix that. And it does not work well for just-in-time manufacturing. Um, if you have a certain deadline that you have to meet at the end of the month, you have to ship out X amount of parts, that's going to be impossible if you have unpredictable breakdowns in your line and you can't meet those deadlines and get those parts out your door. You're going to have a pretty unhappy customer. And it can be very, very costly um, to do business this way because you're always putting out fires. You're not trying to prevent them. And that's just not really what you want to do. You can go to the next one. All right, so the second one we're going to go over is preventive maintenance or time-based maintenance, and that has some advantages and disadvantages as well. Um, some of the advantages are maintenance activities can be scheduled, your manpower requirements can be planned, and spare parts can be ordered as needed. So maintenance activities can be scheduled. So every three years you, re you replace pump A or motor B just because. Uh, whether it fails or it's still running, you replace it so you can plan that. Um, same thing with your manpower requirements. You know when you're going to have this pump or motor taken out. You know it takes X amount of people to uh, perform this. And then you can also have your parts ordered ahead of time. So they're in your stock room and they're at the ready. You're not sitting there biting your nails, waiting for those parts to come in and could possibly push you further behind. Um, some of the disadvantages is that the, the maintenance schedule is historically based. Um, and many of the machines don't wear out on a time schedule basis. And that's because process conditions can affect machine life, along with uh, changes in machine speed and load. Um, you could have two of the same type pieces of equipment in your plant, each one performing a different operation. And the one that has the most load or performs its operation in the most harsh conditions is going to have a shorter span or shorter life cycle. Um, this is going to result in excessive scheduled Scheduled downtime. Um, it's also going to, you're going to use a lot more spare parts and you're going to over maintain or over maintenance of machines because you're always replacing it. Um, you're not trying to maintain it, you just rip it out and put a new one in. All right, you can go ahead. All right, so the last one we're going to go over is condition ba based maintenance, and that's what we do at HECO PSG. Uh, that's kind of our bread and butter. And what that is, is maintenance based on machine condition or the health of the machine that you're surveying. Um, this has a lot of advantages to it. One, you can schedule downtime and that's, or it can be held to a minimum because you're not putting out fires anymore. You're going ahead and you're getting those done. You're knocking it out before it ever happens. And your, your spare parts usage and overtime can be minimized because you're replacing this machine or you're repairing it based on its condition of health. So as you can see over here, we have a timeline and it's about 3,200 days. And as you can see, the vibration survey has been taking readings over this period of time and you can see a steady increase all the way up. And then you get to your alert level and then you have a fault level that you set using those charts and standards that Adam went over earlier. And as you can see, once it starts to get past the alert level, they make a decision. You know, is this, is this something we can stretch to our next outage? And maybe that's what they did. So they plan to have it replaced on this day or repaired. They probably had new bearings put in there. 
and then after that happened, they had uh, baseline readings taken. And, and as you can see, there was a drastic reduction. And what that's going to do is that's going to prolong the life of that, and that's going to establish a good baseline for uh, future readings. Let me go ahead. All right, so the next thing we're going to go over is selecting surveys uh, for the condition-based maintenance. Um, you know, how are you going to decide which pieces of equipment you want surveyed and how often? Um, one of the big ones is criticality. How important is this piece of equipment to your overall process? Is it something that you can just let burn up and it takes two or three hours to replace? Or if it goes down, it puts your whole facility down. Um, that's really important to consider when you're selecting your surveys. Also, machine utilization. Is this something that's in continuous use, 24-7, 365? Um, or is it intermittent? Do you run it on first shift or second shift only? Is it two or three days a week? Or do you have a rotation of spares? Do you have five of the same pieces of equipment and you run one each month? Also, machine failure history. That's another important one to consider. Um, is this something that historically fails every six months as things going out? Um, you might have other issues there that you need to take further uh, look into. And your management parameters. Um, do you have enough manpower and finances to complete these surveys on site? Um, you know, do I have enough qualified and trained people? If not, do I have enough finances to bring a third party in to conduct these surveys and perform these, these uh, vibration analysis? And if the piece of equipment is extremely expensive, like a turbine, um, you're going to want to have continuous monitoring on this. You can want to know what's going on with it every minute of the day because um, you don't want that sucker to take off because then you'd uh, be in some trouble. And continuous monitoring, this is one of the things that allows you to see a, po uh, a problem before it occurs or just when it starts so you can catch it. You can cut it off ahead of time and you're not running around putting out fires or things like that. All right, you can go ahead. <clears throat> 